time. Therefore, we are starting with the today's CGR from our department, Department of Dermatology. And since we had started a new service with our Q switched lasers, we have named the presentation as Q switched lasers light at the end of tunnel. At the outset, I have got no conflicts of interest while making this presentation. So, uh, since residents are here, so what was the first science of the universe? It's an open ended question. What is the first science of the universe? It's not a quiz question, it's not a difficult answer. Subse Pali cheese the Big Bang. Big Bang is a phenomena of physics, right? Next came chemistry, hydrogen, helium, deuterium, and then finally came what is the most modern of all elementary sciences, the science of biology. So what combines the fundamental and modern of all elementary science is laser. The world's first laser is in this photograph, I have picked it up from Wikipedia. And to the next is the gentleman who is credited with this discovery, Mr. Theodore H. Maiman. But whose original idea led to the invention of lasers? Another qu quiz question. Any idea? Okay, one guess is Goldman. Narayanan? Is right. Albert Einstein core idea about light emitting both as a wave and a particle and something about stimulated emission of radiations led to the idea of lasers. There are certain milestones in lasers. I have deliberately omitted Einstein because he gave the core concept. The term laser meaning which light amplification by stimulated emission of radiations was coined by Gould. The first laser designed for an aircraft industry was Maiman. Then the first dermatological paper on clinical applications of laser was by Goldman, whose name was taken. Then came the NDAG laser we will like to talk about in a while. And then Kumar Patel for uh, their work on carbon dioxide laser, something which we will like to have soon. Then there were dye lasers in 69 and in 83 came the theory of selective photothermolysis. Lasers are very interesting phenomena. But what are we dealing with? Why do we need lasers in the first place? The hero or the villain of the piece is the? Your PGs? The villain of the piece here is melanocyte. I hope you can make that out. Melanocyte producing melanin in melanosomes through these crosstalk between keratinocytes and melanocytes through various means of communication. The same melanocyte which exists in the skin as well exists in the black hair of ours, not mine. Some of them have turned white. Uh, this is the biochemical pathway, so there is the connect the department of biochemistry. And these are the melanosomes, the packets which contain the melanin which gives the color to the skin. There are a number of determinants of melanin. As we understand, it's divided into the darker eumelanin and the lighter pheomelanin. And the number of factors regarding the quantity of melanin, the size and distribution of melanosomes, and a number of other things which contribute to the color, the constitutive color of an individual. These are the signals and uh, the crosstalk, as I had referred before, which leads to the phenomena of hyperpigmentation. With color, the problem is, kam ho to dikkat hai, zada ho to dikkat hai. I deliberately kept these three photographs. Come home means in, in the come is rather the absence in this case. A total loss of pigment is vitiligo. It is socially disfiguring. Even after recovery, the exact match doesn't occur. It goes beyond. It causes hyperpigmentation. And then there are conditions like melasma, which are right bang on the face and are very discomforting, very uh, disorienting to the patient. It makes the look unsightly. Then a set of photographs regarding other common pigmentary disorders. To the left, 
Dermatologists will understand these are freckles. Then in the center is lichen planus pigmentosus. Incidentally, we'll, we are working on how to deal with it. It's a very difficult to treat condition. Then there is nevus of ota. And then there are tattoos. This is a very famous tattoo. I am sure the younger among us would identify. So there is an ink called the Mongolian spot, which is given by God, it goes away. And then people like to get inked and then regret it later. Another pigmentary condition are called the lentigenes. Uh, two of uh, photos contributed my co-faculty from the department. The calms, the cafe olimacules, smaller ones and larger ones. Seen in a few uh, phacomatosis, like neurofibromatosis. Then how do we address it? We address it with lasers. I have intentionally marked uh, the laser under question, the one that we have called the neodymium yttrium or aluminum garnet laser with the wavelength of 1064. Uh, this is a textbook reference. And as you can notice, this is a powerful wavelength that it deals with and is able to penetrate right up to the subcutaneous fat. So what does the laser do? It seeks chromophores. Chromophores means pigmented things and pigmented uh, parts like deoxyhemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin, principally melanin and water in the case of another type of laser, the fractional CO2 or the CO2 laser. NDAG hits the melanin part and to some extent also has an effect on hemoglobin. How does it occur? Uh, how does it cause its effect? Now that's an important question. Uh, I was trying to seek a way to simplify it and I could come across two photographs. Interestingly, lasers are incident lights. They will shatter this pigment, break it down into smaller pieces and these smaller pieces are eventually taken away by the lymphatic system macrophages cleared by the body's own uh, mechanisms. The other way it works, maybe in a different scenario is, say, for somebody having a port wine stain on the face. Here, the blood vessel carries the pigment in the form of oxy or deoxyhemoglobin. This is where the laser comes and causes photocoagulation and thereby diminution or the blocking of pathways and uh, the removal of the lesion per se. This is how it works on its chromophores. Now, indications solely for our, the, uh, the laser under question are the epidermal pigmented lesions like lentigenes and freckles I had shown in the photograph before. Cafe olimacules I have again shown in the photograph. And there are dermal pigmented lesions like lichen planus pigmentosis, nevus of ota, both I have shown, nevus of eto. Mongolian spots are the ones which are noted on the back of a newborn. Ori's nevus, abnorms, flat pigmented birthmarks, and tattoos. Now, which one? Uh, NDAG has, a, has this unique ability to cause its effect across two wavelengths, 532 and 1064. Uh, the epidermal lesions respond best to the 532 nanometer wavelength, and lentigenes and freckles fall in this. I'll show you a photograph of the effect of the laser on these uh, conditions. Cafe olimacules also fall under this condition. Uh, the dermal pigmented lesions are deeper. They will require the 1064 nanometer wavelength and includes nevus of ota. Again, I'll show you the response and a few other conditions. Deeper the pigment, longer the wavelength. But the sheer basic of laser is, laser light is no ordinary light. It is monochromatic, it will stick to one wavelength, it will be monodirectional and it will be coherent in a single phase. There will not be an overlap of phases. There are certain terminologies we should be aware of before we deal with how the system works. So there is an energy, power, fluence, and irradiance uh, are the parameters which are utilized while treating a patient on uh, by laser. Energy is total number of photons incident on a target tissue. The unit is joules, energy joule. Power is rate, the time, joule per second. Fluence is the laser energy per unit area, joules per centimeter square, and irradiance is power uh, per unit area, which determines the ability of a laser to incise, vaporize, or coagulate a tissue. The spot size is the mathematical measurement of the radius of the beam. It is measured in millimeters. I'll show you hand pieces uh, where this can be manipulated. Then the burst of laser is through continuous beams, as in a continuous wave, or pulse of long and short duration. It can be Q-switched, which is the highlight of the presentation. It can be pulses. Uh, 
uh, which are in terms of few milliseconds, generally characterized as long pulses. And then there are nanosecond pulses which are considered short. Uh, regarding this, it has got some dealing with the collateral damage which the laser beam causes. The QSUS ND ag laser pulses are typically 3 to 7 nanosecond in length. The pulse frequency are rates at which the pulse are generated. It is expressed in pulses per second hertz. And then there is pulse duration which I was mentioning in terms of millisecond, microsecond or nanosecond. Then there is a thermal relaxation time of the pigment in question. It is the time taken for the target to dissipate 50% of the incident thermal energy on it. Say melanin, a certain energy is imparted. 50% of that energy is dissipated in what amount of time is the thermal relaxation time. Then there is selective photothermolysis. Different wavelengths of lasers variably absorbed by various chromophores produce localized and selective damage. It is one of the core ideas of the working of a laser. Photothermal effect, we understand light uh, being converted into heat and causing destruction of the surrounding tissue. Photoacoustic effect is more like shattering. It's more like incident energy causing sound-like vibration and causing the fragmentation and shattering of pigment. The thermomechanical effect are very high temperatures rapidly causing disruption of cells due to pressure, cavitation and differential expansion. Few switching needs to be highlighted here. I am taking a reference out of a textbook which says uh, this is a mode of laser operation. NDAG, long pulse NDAG, NDAG is I think uh, to the best of my memory also utilized in ophthalmology. So this is how you generate high pulse power where energy is stored in the amplifying medium by optimal pumping while the cavity Q is uh, lower to prevent the onset of the emission. So it's kind of delaying the burst of energy. When a high cavity Q is restored, the stored energy is suddenly released. This is marked in this uh, graph where there is a lag time where the energy is going high and then almost like a shutter releases a shot of light and closes down a high pulse of energy is shot in a very small span of time. So it might be for people uh, of biology, what do I mean to say here? So I try to simplify this. So Q switch and the have, uh, Q switching has a high reflecting mirror and an out coupling mirror. And there is a lasing medium in between which is given energy through various means. So there is a gain there will be transference of photons, there will be a gain, and only when the gain has reached to an optimum will the outcoupling mirror let the laser pass. Till then it will remain inside. The Q switching is considered a fair, fairly revolutionary model. It gave birth to Q switched ruby laser, Q switched alexandrite, and the in, in the infrared category Q switched ND ag laser. Uh, I mentioned in this point that these are lasers working in the green, red and the infrared spectrum of the light. So how does it help? Well, creating an ultra short, high power short pulse capable of shattering targets such as pigment, particles or melanosomes using an electro optical switch, meaning which a very high energy level uh, goes to the chromophore, shatters it and breaks it down as I had so shown in the uh, schematic diagram also. The advantage is uh, you need not cause a lot of, there is selective photothermolysis and the desired clinical effect is achieved without much damage to the surrounding area. NDAG or the Q-switched NDAG has a target chromophore in hemoglobin and black tattoos as well as melanin. So Q-switched NDAG is fairly versatile. It affects both melanin as well as certain colored tattoos and definitely hemoglobin also. We are sharing the photograph of a patient who came to us for freckles. As you might notice, I hope it is visible. Uh, now freckles are pigmentation around the malar area, as is seen in this photograph in the OPD. This is at the time of the laser. And you can barely perceive this bleaching which occurs with a single shot of laser. The moment you shoot a laser of optimum energy on each pigmentary lesion, it kind of bleaches. There is a slight effect also, or maybe a side effect that Besides this lesional bleaching, some amount of perilesional edema and erythema are also noted. And after uh, four weeks, say, so it leaves behind something like a uh, bindi of uh, necrotic tissue in a couple of weeks, it will fall off, sometimes leaving some amount of hyperpigmentation behind. And after a month, you can notice the effect that from here to here, 
it is almost a 70-80% clearance. The result is fairly desirable for the patient because these conditions do not respond well to any amount of topical medication. Then this is an interesting entity. Why I say interesting is we are doing a thesis on it. This is a fairly refractory condition to deal with. I'll show you a photograph of this condition. In, intentionally to hide the identity of the patient, this, is, this pigment is not only localized to the forehead, it is there on the uh, neck area, it is there on the lower face, and you can quite easily see that over sittings done over a month, the pigmentation is showing some signs of going away. Some might wonder that there is not much response to be shown here, it's hardly 20-30%, but the condition is such. And uh, we are also trying to figure out what suits best to our patients of various skin types. Now this is a different, con uh, different patient and you can very well notice that the response is far better than what was seen on the face. This is a clear cut, if not 30, if not 50, around 30 to 40 percent response in the uh, loss of pigment. These are results which are fairly impressive for the patient. They haven't achieved for years. This is a very chronic condition. A similar condition over the neck and uh, on the top you are noticing the baseline and four weeks later and then further four weeks later across three settings and you can see already see there is some amount of variation obviously because of the mobile cameras and their settings which our residents use but there is a definite relief from say this to this to an extent of at least 40 50 percent again which is impressive because otherwise this condition responds very poorly to medical treatment neva safota it's almost a given that the treatment of choice remains q switched in di glazer this is after two settings this is this doesn't have the baseline photograph i have taken it from uh, my co faculty you can see a diminution and to the tune of 60 to 80% response may be seen between four to five settings of qsg and di glazer in this condition again nothing else works here tattoos tattoos are of various colors the newer generation would know better than i do they are professional tattoos people go and pay and get get it done then they are amateur tattoos then they are cosmetic tattoos now the response to QSIS uh, uh, 1064 nanometer depends on the type of tattoo. I have a couple of photographs uh, not done exactly by me but by my colleagues. Uh, not all colors will respond. Uh, you will notice it in this photograph. Now, again this is from my faculty. Uh, people get them inked. Now this is across three settings and you can notice that the result may not be very impressive. Now this is again subject to a couple of conditions. It takes time for them to go. So we sitting on a judgment that the response is not adequate may not be fair. It may take some more time to go and the color variation is also responsible for the response of uh, uh, the laser, uh, response of the tattoo to the laser. Another uh, similar uh, condition, this is uh, from my uh, colleague Dr. Saurabh and uh, within a couple of settings, I think the response is decent enough for encouraging the patient to come back for another setting. Then there are vascular lesions like rosacea, facial telangiectasias, poikilodermas, hemangiomas, where this laser can work. I personally don't have any experience of utilizing it in these conditions as of now. How do you do it? Well, the consent and selection of patient is important. While making this presentation, I'd, I had requested uh, one of my patients who had got it done for acne and uh, she politely denied the use of the photograph when the result was very impressive to be shown here. So the consent, not in terms of the procedure only, but also about photographic recording and subsequent use should be taken. Tanning, now interestingly, lasers hitting via the melanin that we all have in type four, five or six skin that we have, uh, this melanin is considered as a melanin curtain. It doesn't permit the uh, laser to pass. So people who have come from a hill excursion or from a beach excursion with tanning are not exactly ideal candidates because they will have that much more chromophore for the laser to hit and they will have that much more side effects. Systemic retinoids, there is a recommendation, a controversial rec recommendation that they should not be undergoing laser treatment. And an interesting way of gaining confidence and also scientific is to do a test patch, a small area so that the patient himself or herself sees the response and is encouraged enough to take the subsequent sitting. Interestingly, NDAG 
in and the eye again i'll request ma'am to highlight this i think nd ag is used in on the eye but in our teaching eye protection is a must a permanent retinal damage and vision loss occurs if qc laser light is allowed to pass through the eye right right eye protection in the form of optically coated glasses or goggles for the specific laser being used is necessary the eye wear should block the wavelength being used and all persons present in the room should be wearing it ideally interoperative technique well the game is all about physics the learning curve of this laser say in comparison to the laser which is done for laser hair removal is slightly steep you can use the factory settings do your response but the best response is when you gain confidence enough and are ready to play with these settings to get the optimum response there are fluences uh, there are spot sizes i have introduced the concept before and the treatment uh, end point is an immediate whitening of the lesion which may not be seen in deeper lesions though and then there are complications like any other procedure in dermatology or surgery uh, or even pharmacology you cannot have an effect without any side effect immediate erythema i had shown physical urticaria i think uh, dr suman would also agree in uh, some cases of ours of lichen planus pigmentosus there is a strange urticarial wheel which appears physical urticaria can be induced acne form eruptions can come minute ptk can come whitening of the hair would be evident in a video which i show subsequently the other issue is if the patient is pigmented the the response that i showed you was in a fair patient if this same patient is a bit pigmented the response is not so good it may lead to if the energy settings are not played with uh, hypopigmentation or depigmentation too uh, whitening of the hair is i think partially visible you would notice fine vellus hair turn from black to white and this is the edema that comes across when you do a freckle setting around the eye now you have to stop the laser too if the complications become like mottled pigmentation it can lead to leukedema is it is an old term but white lesions severe urticaria severe acne form eruption or herpes simplex activations these are generally the conditions where you don't offer any dermatosurgical option whatsoever post operative ins instructions are also very important we insist that since most of these conditions are based on melanin and melanin production is directly influenced by uh, the solar radiations that you have to use a broad spectrum sunscreen almost mandatorily three times in a day immediately after the treatment uh, the treated area appears a bit inflamed and we offer our patients ice packs but there are theories that offering the ice pack may kind of ameliorate the response that you are about to achieve clearing the area with copious amount of water applying a topical antibiotic avoiding sun exposure for sure and cosmetics uh, for a couple of days treatments are generally scheduled i will like, say between 4 to 8 weeks some do it even earlier and oral anti inflammatory and antibiotic very very rarely this is our laser room i was wishing our superintendent was here we are requesting him to offer us a bigger facility here are our two lasers this is our older laser the diode laser for laser hair removal this is our new kid new kid this is how it looks these are the probes or the hand pieces which we change for our various uh, indications uh, this is how the interface shows and you play along with these settings to get uh, the laser setting done these are the eye pieces i was talking about for the protection of the eye and as it is mandatory not only for the operator and the patient but everybody around to wear it there is a video of a procedure for lichen planus pigmentosus uh when it pans i hope you will notice that there is some pigmentary change right there and you would notice there is some sort of mammulation or uneven surface coming out of the urticarial response you get because of the laser it was kind of fascinating to look at laparoscopic pictures so learning it from our surgery mates and bringing a video of the procedure but this is the procedure done this far So these are the indications where we have given it a shot. You can see these are number in in excess of a dozen. Our monthly uh, QC NDAG uh, has uh, risen from September or uh, roughly about a dozen to about 66 even in this month today being the last day. This is a popular procedure this is a cosmetic procedure this is non ablative very little downtime is the word that the patient comes gets it done as an office procedure goes back with very little 
to hide but there are there is a lot to be explored i know some of us are using it in areas uh, where pigmentation can be shot at uh, there is photo aging where it works there is photo rejuvenation where it works uh, in fact i came across this interesting publication i would wish my mates from uh, dentistry were here even for uh, pigmentary gums acucis endiag has been uh, tried for lightening i know it's a stretch but it works on pigment nonetheless so i'll summarize by saying uh, that lasers in medical specialties are here to stay acucis switching is a powerful tool for a variety of indications they enhance the non ablative options of treatment because now there are options which are ablative and still useful in pigmentary disorders these are safe and learning curve is not steep relatively but they are not the final option in treatment i am not going to paint a picture where my freckle patient will not get his her freckle back it, it will come back it will come back late but it will come back many new indications are coming up the gum photograph will attest that technology is evolving to yield newer safer and more effective options also there is a new kid on the block newer than what we have what is called as pico laser so it is about uh, nanosecond now pico second the duration is lesser the collateral damage to the tissue is lesser uh, the breakage of pigment is into much finer uh, residues which can easily be taken care of by the body so the technology continues to evolve uh, interestingly maimen said once that laser is a solution seeking a problem because when he devised it there was no indication for where there used to be a use of laser we have come a lot of uh, distance from that time and i thank you all for your attention with the acknowledgement of our patients my co faculty have contributed uh, and have continued to do a number of procedures the residents who have helped me in making this presentation thank you any comments i was just asking whether acanthosis can also be a indication because yes. you did know acanthosis okay. is also an indication of doing qcs and diag laser although as an endocrinologist i will i will suspect that it's better to correct the underlying yeah, endocrinological yes. anomaly rather than just address the pigment because it will invariably yes come but back. despite correcting that sometimes the hyperpigmentation persists it takes it becomes a different form so just like it is a definite indication sir any other question suggestion right thank you then